Hello everybody, Vidim here, and it is time for another V update. And this is a very special V update for me because uh, we are in October, which means it is time for Halloween, and everybody on YouTube is preparing their Halloween special. Right now, I'm working on my Halloween special, uh, but uh, uh, before I actually go on with all the Halloween stuff, I really want to uh, update first on the things that I've been doing on the channel. And I really want to say that uh, finally, starting next week, we're going to start to upload uh, new episodes on the channel. But the first episode that we're going to upload is the two year anniversary, uh, which is episode 8 of Plugged In. Uh, where we are celebrating our two-year anniversary, uh, a celebration that's supposed to be uh, up on May, but for all the problems that I, I have with health, work, and all this stuff, I was not able to have that show done in time. Uh, in matter, uh, the matter of fact that I've been out of YouTube for uh, for five months. I haven't done new videos for five months. Uh, new episodes and that actually really bugged me because I don't like to be awake that much. I really like to continue my my videos, my work and all that stuff. But I really have some issues that uh, didn't allow me to have those shows on time. Uh, so next week, finally, episode 8, our two year anniversary celebration. Uh, it's going to be up. Uh, at the same time, we are going to be including new episode of Fighter Sedge, a new Fighter Sedge, uh, and uh, we'll be starting to uh, our new show, which is Medium Kate Coin Pit, which is about arcade games, and it's a show that I really, really wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, and finally, I already recorded all the footage and all the stuff. But I'm giving it the final touches and all that, all that stuff. At the same time, I want to update on V Game Masters, which is the main show of our channel. Uh, it's a show that actually uh, I had it uh, at the very beginning of the channel, which was the first show that I did. And he, at the moment, the episodes ran between May. 2009 until December 2009. Then I, on December, I made uh, the We Sapper review, which was the, the the season finale of V Game Masters. I was supposed to be out for two months, and on February, I was supposed to bring the new season. But uh, a lot of new ideas and a lot of stuff that I really wanted to do started to come to my mind. And I actually postponed the season. The problem is that it's been postponed for a very, very long time. And I haven't been able to acquire all the tools that I really want them to actually do the show. And the other day I say, the hell with it. I'm going to do it the same way that I've been doing all along. Improvising and all that stuff. Uh, one of the things that I like to do in my video is to do quality with uh, less money or no money at all. Not how my budget is really, really minimal. Uh, but there's a lot of things I really want to acquire for, for me to be able to uh, make my vision come true of what I really want to present all of you. Uh, but I'm not going to keep postponing the show, so I'm starting to write uh, the script and all that stuff. Uh, so I hope that next month I finally have the first uh, episode of uh, Season 2 of VK Masters uh, without the, the tools that I'm needing. But I'm, going to, I'm, I'm still trying to get them, but I'm not going to postpone the show anymore. Now, the real reason why I want to do this video is because of Halloween in October for all of us gamers uh, it comes to be uh, Halloween gaming for all of us and everybody's talking about Halloween and uh, Halloween games and every time that we think about Halloween gaming the games that actually comes to our mind are games like Resident Evil, 
uh, Silent Hill, uh, uh, Dead Space, so all those kind of games are very bloody and gory and all that stuff. Uh, those are the games that actually comes to my mind, which are arcade because they are awesome games. They are games that I actually like. But there is other type of video games that actually fits the description of Halloween game, and our games are not that gory and bloody and all that stuff. But actually, they have the theme of Halloween all over. And I really want to go through a uh, uh, series that I love, there has to be with Halloween game, and a hint, the first game of this series is considered to be one of the hardest games ever, and every time that someone hears the name of that game, so the first thing that comes to their mind is, yeah, that game is so hard, and it is Ghost and Goblins. This is my original copy of Ghosts and Goblins, which I had it all these years. It has my name on the back. I still have it with the original manual and everything. And I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I played Ghosts and Goblins at the arcades so many times. Uh, I usually used to play it on a piece of parlor near my house. That they actually have the cocktail version of Ghosts and Goblins, and I used to play that a lot. Uh, the arcade game, absolutely awesome. It's one of the most fantastic video games of its time, and it is one of the hardest video games of all time. It's still considered one of the hardest video games of all time. Now, uh, the way that I actually acquired my Ghosts and Goblins from my NES, which this is one of my first. NES games is that I actually received my NES at Christmas back in 87, 88, don't remember. And I asked my aunt and my grandmother to uh, get me NES games. So my mom actually got me the NES, the action pack, which comes with the Zapper, Super Mario Brothers, and Duck Hunt. My aunt got me Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and my grandmother actually got me Ghosts and Goblins. Now the thing is that uh, I, I normally tell them why I really want it, but I didn't know the exact library of NES games back in that time. So I didn't tell them in time what games I really wanted, except for my aunt that I told her I want Mike Tyson's Sponge Out, uh, because I already knew about that game through a friend of mine. Then, uh, I was trying to think about what game to ask to my grandma. I didn't know, I actually didn't know that the, this game exists on the NES. And then I found out, but my grandma already bought me the game. And the way that I actually find out that she got me Ghosts and Goblins is because I found the game at her bedroom closet. That was one of the things that I did when I was a kid. I always look in the closets trying to find the game. Christmas present, the birthday present, I always found them. And I always knew what I was going to get uh, before the time. And I was very happy to actually be able to get Ghosts and Goblins. It was a destiny that I was going to own this amazing game. Now, I played this, the, the NES version many times, uh, hard as hell. I Sometimes I actually get mad at the game. Uh, because it's easier to get mad at this one than the arcade because the arcade you depend on the coins and if you don't you don't have any more coins so you can stop playing. But on the NES is free play, so you don't have to spend money on it and all you want is to achieve your goals and get to the end uh, the end boss of beating him and defeating the entire game. So imagine how many times I played this game every time that that Red Devil, the one that we know now as Fiber, came out and he destroyed me. I, I really got mad. Every, on the last stage, like, he appears like three or four times and sometimes in packs of two or three. And I hated it. Uh, but the game is awesome. It doesn't matter. Every time that you lose, 
you just want to continue and keep going and going and going. And that's the way I actually beat the game I, by persistence and all that stuff. The only problem that all the people have with Ghost and Goblin is that you, the series has this stupid idea that you have to finish the game twice. And the first run is hard, second run is even harder. And that is one of the things that made many people throw the game out of their windows. Uh, secondly, uh, the series is Ghouls and Ghosts. This is part 2, which is on the Sega Genesis. I acquired this uh, a few weeks back. Uh, always trying to get it. Finally got it complete. And it looks almost brand new. It looks like it like has never been played before. Uh, the manual has some uh, tear and wear, but it doesn't matter. It's complete. The game looks awesome. I actually had this game on a plug and play controller uh, that was for Street Fighter 2, the spe uh, special chapter edition, which is the Genesis version. And it came with that game uh, uh, a ROM of Ghost and, uh, Ghost and Ghost, sorry. And that was the first time that I actually had the game. Uh, but I really wanted the real physical copy and finally got it. I didn't know about this game uh, until a classmate of mine back in the day told me that he had it and I borrowed it for him, played it, loved it, and I finished this game way more easier than Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, I went through this game really fast. I didn't know about the, the arcade game because I never saw it. So the, the arcade game, I thought it was just a, a game that was made for the Genesis, but no, I actually found the, the arcade game. Uh, many years later, on a carnival that I went, they have a small arcade section set up, and they had the arcade version of Goose and Ghost. Then, when the Super Nintendo came out, Super Goose and Ghost, part three of the series, uh, this one was given to me by my wife when we when we were dating. Is it uh, a used card? It has some stains there, but I can actually go get those out, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, and I have it with the manual and everything. Don't have the box though, but... Now, Ghosts and Super Ghosts and Ghosts uh, includes many of the, the uh, mechanics that Ghosts and Ghosts has. It has the gold armor, now you have normal armor, you have a gold armor, it actually gives you extra power, but it also has a third armor, which is a green jade armor. Uh, more enemies, is even lo longer than Ghouls and Ghosts, and it's harder than Ghouls and Ghosts. Now, between the three, I found that Ghosts and Goblins is the hardest of the three, then the Super Nintendo version, and then uh, Ghosts and Ghosts in the second Genesis. I actually found that Genesis game is the easiest of the three. The thing is that the game actually spawned uh, spin-offs. It actually spawned two amazing spin-offs. I want to go with the second spin-off first, uh, which is a series that came out on the PlayStation 2 and is the maximum. Now, I don't think that he's related. Arthur on the Ghosts and Goblins, but the game actually does happen on the Ghosts and Goblins universe. And I was able to find this for ten dollars uh, on it was in GameStop, I believe. Brand new, loved it. And then the sequel, which is Maximo versus the Army of Zen, which I got on Best Buy for ten dollars as well. I actually found this this one first. And then part one. I haven't gone through these two yet, but I know they are amazing. I actually loved it. I started to play this one uh, and actually like what I saw. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't resemble Ghost and Goblin that much on the gameplay, but the graphics and how the, the characters look actually reminds you of the Ghost and Goblin characters. Now, the spin off that I love the most. It has to be with the character that I hate the most, and it is that red gargoyle. And they actually made a spin off for it, they made an entire new series for him, which is called Gargoyle's Quest. 
Now, Gargoyle's Quest is a very different type of game. It's like an RPG, uh, an action RPG, uh, which is a game that I actually tolerate. Uh, I'm not a big fan of RPG. I do like RPGs. I have played my share of RPG. My favorite RPG of all time is Lunar uh, on the Sega CD. Uh, but being able to play this game in a different way that is not that turn-based RPG all this stuff that actually bores me a little was completely awesome. It has some RPG elements, but at the same time, it has like those. Uh, side-scrolling, uh, platformer type of video game that I really love and I really liked it. I have my original uh, version of Gargoyle's Quest right over here. It was released on the Nintendo Game Boy. got this on my birthday. Uh, I have it with the, the manual, but it's somewhere back there. Like, all that mess. I have to clean that up. Now, the game actually gives you a, a different perspective from Ghost Goblins. In Ghost Goblins, you are Arthur and you are trying to rescue your princess because the demon lord kidnapped her. In here, you are playing as Firebrand, which is one of the gargoyles that comes from the demon world, because their world has been overwhelmed by an ar uh, army of darkness or whatever. And it tells you a whole story that happens thousands of years ago and is, is happening all over again. So you have to take your gargoyle and make him uh, a hero this time. And he's a descendant of uh, a gargoyle that fought that army many years back. And so you have to step up and save the gold realm. And the game is completely awesome. Then they actually released Gargoyle's Quest 2. But this time they did it on the NES. Uh, I actually bought this uh, on KB Toys before they actually went out of business. And I have it with my manual and everything. Bought it brand new. And I really loved it. I don't know, but for some reason I, th I thought that Gargoyle's Quest 2 was also released on Game Boy. But I don't know if any of you know about that. Let me know. The thing is that I love this game. It's the same mechanics as Gargoyle's Quest One. The only difference is that it's in full color. Uh, the, the, the game is a little bit longer than the original one being on the Game Boy. Uh, but it's, it's, it's actually the same game. You are doing the same thing that you did on the first game, but now in a bigger scale. And it has different powers now and all this stuff. Then Capcom releases part three, which is Demon Crest. It's not called Gargoyle's Quest 3 or anything, but this is the third part of the series. Once again, you are Fireman and you have to step up to save the Gora. But what makes that game so different is that this time Firebrand can actually transform into different types of gargoyles. Instead of having different powers like the other, the, the other two games, uh, now he can transform into different gargoyles that have different skills. There's a gargoyle that goes down the water and swim faster. Uh, there's another gargoyle that actually uh, he, he make like a, a dash attack. Uh, there's another guy who will fly faster and all that stuff. And depending on the area that you are playing, you will use one of these uh, special cargo skills. Now the game actually has two final bosses. When you finish the game, you find this boss and all this all you. But there is another boss, which is harder than hell. My best friend and I found out about that uh, last boss, and we went on on a killing spree to kill that boss and we actually played for hours until we finally beat that boss. It was really, really hard. Now, there are other amazing video games out there that have the Halloween theme that do not have to be, they don't have to be, sorry, um, bloody and gory and all that stuff. I know that we like that because I actually like that too. But there are other options. For those people that don't like uh, blood and gore and all that stuff, there are other amazing games who are really, really fun to play. 
and are really fun to play on the Halloween time. So remember, ghosts and goblins, ghosts and ghosts, and super ghosts and ghosts. Uh, and then spin-offs, Gargoyles Quest, Gargoyles Quest 2, Demon Quest, and Maximo, and Maximo versus the Army of Sin. So I'm gonna continue doing my work here. This has been the V-Update for this month. See ya.